This is functional horsemanship. I'm doing a post for Joanne, who I believe she was from southern Georgia, and she wrote me about uh, maybe doing a video to help her learn some beginning roping. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a couple things to help you get started, and I'm going to direct you to a couple uh, DVDs by some professional ropers and a book by Buck Brandon, who's probably uh, the most uh, uh, well-known ranch roper in this part of the country. Um, I've got a, a 5 16th inch uh, nylon ranch rope. I buy them at, at 60 foot lengths. I cut them at 48. Uh, if I leave them too much longer, that it becomes too much of a handful for me. I get a very soft lay. It's an extra, extra soft lay. It's a ranch rope and I buy them either from Craig Cameron's website or I buy them uh, from uh, National Roper Supply. I've got a metal Honda. This portion right here that the rope feeds through is called the Honda. This is an aluminum one and it's a swivel Honda. It swivels around. It helps me get the kinks out. It gives me a little extra uh, weight for those longer throws if I had a, a cow in a, mud paw, uh, in, a, in a mud patch or something I'm trying to pull out. So this is the Honda. This is the coils portion of the rope. They fit in your hand like this. The ropes are going to be, are going to be fed in this direction in your hands. When I build a loop, all I'm going to do is, is take, that, take that loop and that Honda I'm going to open it up like this, tip it around, build it a little bit bigger, and once more. So the loop I built is probably, uh, if I hold my arm out straight, it touches the ground and it's about my shoulder length. I don't want to be holding the spoke too close to that Honda there. That's too close. I want to get back like this, give it some room. It helps get the weight, the, the rope balanced and gives me some... Uh, some uh, distance when I want to make a throw. Joanne, I suggest that you find something like a traffic cone or a box or something like that. Stand just a few feet in front of it. Once you get that loop build, you're just going to start a diagonal process like this and sp spin it around your head. Notice that my arm isn't going like this. I want to make very small motion with my arm. My wrist is doing most of the work. I'm going to hold the, this rope here. I can't hold them tight, the coils. they got to be loose so they can feed out as I throw the rope. All I'm going to do is turn my wrist down on top of the target like that so I can look down my finger and point at my object. It also puts my hand in this position here so I can grab the slack of the rope and pull it back with my thumb up. Your thumb needs to be up because when you start dallying into a saddle horn, you don't get your thumb caught in there and uh, rip your thumb off. So again, you're spinning the rope like this, mostly wrist motion, and when you release it, you're going to come down like this, and you release the rope, and your finger's pointing at your target. Again, it looks like this without the rope here. And then your finger goes down, palm down, your thumb's up, so you pull that slack like this, and your thumb's automatically open. Up. I was going to say a traffic cone's a good target because it allows you to throw the rope up, but Sometimes it gets stuck. Coil the rope back in. Build my loop. Behave yourself, Junior. Again, the spoke. The distance from my hand to the Honda is about that much. Hold the uh, loop out at my sides, about shoulder, about shoulder high. All I'm going to do is from here, hold the coils up, and my hand starts a diagonal, and then goes to parallel to the ground like this. And once I release it, my finger's right at my target where I can pull up my slack. I hope that helps, Joanne. And I'm going to put a couple links uh, to a, some good roping videos and a good Buck Brandeman book. Safe journey.